This Week on The Communicators, a discussion about how the Internet affects professional screen and script writers. Our guest is Patrick Verone, the head of the West Coast chapter of the Writers Guild of America. From time to time, members of the entertainment community come to Capitol Hill to address their needs in front of Congress. It's the same for our guest today, who represents writers, particularly among the West Coast. Patrick Verone is the, the president of the Writers Guild of America West. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, tell us a little bit about this guild. Who makes up your members? Uh, there are 8,000 members of the Writers Guild of America West. We include uh, TV writers, uh, both broadcast and cable, motion picture writers, uh, and as of recently, uh, new media and internet writers, uh, along with the Writers Guild of America East. Uh, we represent uh, most of the entertainment writers uh, in the United States. Typically, we address a lot of issues in front of various congressional forums. The entertainment community from time to time, what do you usually come, as, as far as your members are concerned, when you come to Congress, what kind of issues are you addressing mainly? Well, in the past, the Writers Guild West hasn't been uh, particularly uh, active in uh, 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 appearances before uh, legislators. That's something that we've uh, uh, taken upon uh, a change in, in, because, uh, you know, for a long time, I guess the last time we were here was before the House on American Activities Committee, and that didn't work out so good. So, so we took a break for about 50 years, but, but now there's, there's issues of, of uh, free speech, of media consolidation, of network neutrality on the Internet, uh, you know, things that, that uh, uh, affect us as as writers, uh, but also as members of the the Hollywood talent community and as employees of of, of the media conglomerates. What brought you to Capitol this time was a hearing called the Future of the Internet. What's the Writers Guild role in something uh, role in something like this? Well, what uh, uh, the the nature of the the hearing itself was the future of the internet, particularly as it relates to uh, net neutrality, which is the uh, 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 the technique to uh, allow uh, the internet to remain an open uh, network for access of content and delivery of content um, uh, freely. I think people have the perception that you turn on your your computer and and whatever's there you can just reach out and, and grab. When in fact there's a there's a pipe through which the uh, uh, the content is provided, whether it be uh, entertainment or information. Uh, it's provided through a pipe, and, and uh, uh, Congress, in this case the Senate Commerce Committee, uh, wanted to be attentive to uh, whether that pipe may somehow get crimped. And when it comes to writers, particularly of entertainment writers, why are they interested in this? Well, one of the important issues, uh, probably the most important issue in our negotiation and the 100-day strike that we completed earlier this year, uh, was to make sure that as uh, the Internet became a delivery system for, for content, for uh, traditional television shows and, and feature films, that, that we got, uh, we as writers, uh, got our, our fair share. Uh, historically, uh, the Writers Guild, in representing uh, TV and film writers, uh, there are, uh, is initial compensation that our contracts cover, uh, pension, health insurance, uh, and the reuse of our content. Uh, uh, when, it, when a TV show airs initially, uh, the writer gets paid, but then when it airs on, uh, on cable rebroadcast or when it goes to uh, home video DVD, the writer gets paid again. Uh, when the Internet, be was become, as it was becoming a, a new delivery system, a, a force for, for getting uh, that content out to uh, uh, a new generation of viewers, uh, the, the content owners, namely the uh, studios and networks for which we work, were claiming that uh, it was promotional or that we weren't entitled to any kind of payment. This was true not only for writers, but actors and, and directors uh, as well. And uh, that was largely what our strike was about, to make sure that we uh, got our fair share of Internet reuse, which we did. Uh, and then additionally, when new content is uh, created for the Internet, um, not just uh, uh, guys in their garage dropping Mentos into uh, Diet Coke, but uh, anything that's actually written for the Internet and produced with an intent of, of, of selling advertising or for subscription or however uh, the studios and, and the content providers choose to make money off of it, it was our uh, desire, and, and we achieved that, to get compensated, to get our pension, uh, to get health insurance, and to get uh, credits for it. Um, but it becomes uh, a logical next step that as the Internet becomes a device for distribution of content, that we had to be very careful that the uh, 
uh, the same people who are providing the distribution uh, aren't limiting that distribution or discriminating uh, in terms of the speed or the bandwidth uh, as to how that uh, uh, content is uh, distributed. We saw uh, in the history of entertainment uh, as, as a media, whenever there's a new media, motion pictures uh, were the new media 100 years ago, 75 years ago it was radio, 50 years ago television. Uh, each time the uh, corporatization, uh, naturally because that's where the, the funding comes from, that's where the financing for uh, high cost productions come from, uh, they control the content and then eventually through policy choices at the, at the government level, they also ended up controlling uh, distribution. When the financial syndication rules were uh, eliminated in the 1990s, uh, that allowed companies to control both uh, the production of films and TV shows and the distribution. And we want to make sure going forward that we've seen that that's eliminated independent voices. We've seen that that's eliminated uh, the, the, the classic case of, of a Norman Lear or a, a Stephen J. Cannell who uh, produced some of the most important TV shows of the, of the 70s and 80s and 90s. That independent voice uh, is gone in, in, in television because the studio is produced and distributed. So now we're looking to the internet as a mechanism through which anybody, uh, viewers at home, can produce and distribute. And we want to make sure that the internet remains that free and open device. But a double-edged sword if content gets taken from a writer and then ends up, uh, end up, ends up on the internet without compensation. Naturally, we're concerned about issues like piracy. Uh, the internet is not the free exchange of other people's ideas, they're the free exchange of, of your ideas. And if you want to uh, disseminate somebody else's, then you appropriately pay them. And I think that's, uh, uh, that's a, a concept in this nation that goes back to Jefferson and the, the in very incentive to get uh, content uh, developed and in invention and creativity is designed to give the individual compensation copyright protection. So if the internet is used as a device to to simply freely exchange other people's works without those people getting paid, whether they be writers, actors, directors, musicians, uh, you name it, that's not uh, in our best interest and, and it's not encouraging to the entertainment uh, talent community. So, so but, but we, just to put a fine point on it, we don't necessarily think that a neutral and free and open internet means that you can't have protections from illegal content or content that you don't own be being disseminated. Uh, we think that certainly, and, and the legislation that, that's being proposed, Senators uh, Dorgan and, and Snow have legislation called the Internet Freedom and Preservation Act that's designed to allow for an open marketplace uh, of Internet content, but uh, with protections for, uh, uh, to prevent illegal use. Uh, of co uh, content. How do you, uh, if you have protections in place, then how do you monitor or set up a system to make sure those protections are enforced considering the Internet's nature? It's difficult, uh, but not impossible. We are certainly seeing the, the technologies developing, including watermarking and, and devices that allow for uh, uh, tracking and, and uh, the content owners to uh, police, as it were, after the fact, uses that, uh, that were not legal. Um, you know, we're living in a, in a free society where we have the First Amendment protecting free speech and, and for 200 years that hasn't been uh, uh, absolute. Uh, you can't uh, shout, uh, falsely shout fire in a crowded theater and cause a panic. And uh, Justice Holmes said that and we'll, we'll back him up on that, to, so that so that if there is illegal use or improper use of, of, of speech, then we're certainly in favor of, of making sure that it's uh, pr protected and, and, and properly uh, uh, eliminated. As far as the protections that the Dorgan bill offers, specifically what do you like most about it? Well again, this is designed to be non-discriminatory, uh, non-discriminatory use of the internet, whereas uh, what could happen uh, is the, uh, the cable provider, or if you get your internet through the telephone, uh, limiting how fast your access is to any given a website or uh, uh, any given uh, type of content, whether it be video or, or still uh, pictures or simply, uh, you know, blogs. Um, any of that, uh, there are ways to uh, con control that exchange of, 
material, and we want to make sure that that is not done in a discriminatory way that limits uh, the, the dissemination based on the content itself. Uh, and that's, uh, I, we believe, what the Dorgan uh, Snow bill and in the House, uh, Senate, uh, Congressman uh, Ed Markey has similar legislation. When it comes to the areas of content, one of the things that get discussed frequently on Capitol Use a Hill is the, the idea of fair use. And being a content provider yourself, how does the Internet change what fair use currently stands for and what the future of fair use might be because of the Internet's nature? No, fair use is something, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of actually teaching uh, uh, copyright classes that... Uh, where fair use and, and particularly the, the parity exceptions to, uh, uh, to, to the copyright law are, are, uh, are important, and they're important to me. I have made my living uh, uh, for the past 20 years as a, as a comedy writer and, and doing programming, particularly animation, uh, where you have the, the freedom to, to satirize and, and make uh, comments uh, on, on existing media. And, and, I certainly want to be one who preserves that, and so uh, I think fair use is uh, a, an established and and valid part of of the copyright exceptions. And uh, uh, however, we also want to make sure that the uh, the fair use is done based on the standards that are that are uh, that are required, uh, having to do with with the quantity, the amount use, the qualitative heart of the matter that uh, uh, that uh, the case law. Uh, requires. I don't want to get too legalistic for your viewers, but but there are some uh, very clear standards for for fair use that uh, that I think apply uh, in in the public discourse of newspapers and and TV and film that I think would just just as readily apply. And so you're okay Internet. with as it currently stands fair use. We're not uh, we're not objecting in any way to the way that the uh, the copyright laws are applied. Uh, we simply want to make sure that. Uh, uh, when content is dis di disseminated, it's not discriminated uh, against because of the content itself. Uh, if, if, if it has, if it qualifies for fair use, then by all means. Uh, do you believe lawsuits are the way to go as far as making sure that, that your content is protected and that your uh, profit and, and revenue that, that writers get are, are protected? Well, we spent a long time collectively bargaining to make sure that we have that uh, those protections uh, not only on the internet but but historically in TV and film. So uh, the way we naturally uh, enforce that contract is through uh, arbitration or grievances and and lawsuits if it if it gets to that. Um, but I think the legislation that that we're talking about uh, today that we're uh, testifying on on uh, Capitol Hill regarding. Uh, protects, in theory, those existing laws which uh, we think should be applied to the Internet. And if it means using litigation to support them, well, I, I suppose that's the way to go. We're not, we're not, uh, my, my other hat is a lawyer. I'm not, I'm not here to, uh, uh, to encourage litigation or lawsuits, but I do think that, that you know, the, the laws should be enforced. A couple of years ago, you testified at a hearing on media consolidation. You said something along the lines of, that media consolidation, as you saw it, was the palpable effect of consolidation is to reduce them, uh, I guess these are creative voices, not only to express those ideas to the one corporate voice or this corporate voice. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about what you saw happening two years ago as far as media consolidation and bring that up to date is what you see now and if those voices, especially those independent ones, are being, uh, you know, quashed. Well, uh, that, just to back up a little bit, that, that testimony was before the FCC at a time when they were considering uh, uh, laxing regulations that dealt with uh, the ability of uh, uh, TV stations and, and radio stations and newspapers within any given market to be, uh, to be owned by the same uh, individuals, the same corporate entities, and, and that was testimony that we were joined in by all the talent uh, unions and guilds in Hollywood as well as a, a broad range of, of the political spectrum because again it's an issue of if only one voice in a community is allowed to speak or be the disseminator of speech then uh, that eliminates, uh, eliminates the, uh, the, the, the nature of the content to what that entity believes and so it was very important to, to us to make sure that the FCC appreciated that that allowing uh, uh, companies to go out and buy up every TV station every radio station every newspaper in, in any given community 
uh, was something that we thought was was violative of the the. It was certainly uh, something that the the community as a whole would 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 suffer as, as a result. You know, we've we've looking back uh, almost a generation now. We've seen the uh, uh, as media has consolidated, as uh, public policy has moved in the direction of deregulation of media. It's allowed for very very few companies to control. Uh, the content and the distribution. When I uh, I started writing in this business uh, about 22 years ago for, for for Johnny Carson and and I was uh, I was seven at the time and uh, we uh, you know we saw at that point there were about 30 independent companies uh, that produced. Since then uh, there've been relaxation of the of the what they call the FinCEN rules that allowed companies that produced to also distribute. So now the networks. Uh, became the producers as well. Um, C-SPAN is one of the few independent, truly independent cable entities, and and uh, nevertheless, most of cable television is now owned by uh, one of about six or seven uh, major uh, multinational conglomerates that also control broadcast. Many of them also uh, own uh, uh, cable distribute actual cable companies like uh, Time Warner. Um, they also own newspapers and satellite, and they're, they're, they're big businesses, and they're the folks for whom most of the entertainment industry works one way or the other. And so with that consolidation, the independents, the independent voices were not able to get through. You, you had to, you know, your ideas had to go through the, the, the corporation, whether it be, and not to cast any aspersions against any individual one, but, you know, NBC Universal, a subsidiary of General Electric, uh, uh, Time Warner, Viacom, uh, News Corp, which is Fox. Um, this was this is a, a you know a limiting number uh, of voices, and all, all and then along comes the internet, and along comes this this free and open uh, what what the cable industry called today the Wild West, which was the ability of uh, allowed talent uh, and and content creators to uh, disseminate their content through. Uh, a whole new unfettered uh, uh, pipeline, and uh, you know, I, I go back to Francis Coppola, the director of The Godfather, writer and director of The Godfather, said about a dozen years ago that the uh, the next movie like The Godfather, great American film, would not be made by him. It would be made by some seven-year-old girl with a digital camera, and the, but the trick would be getting it distributed. Well, now thanks to YouTube and the internet, we we have distribution mechanism for. Uh, everybody and so again we just want to make sure that while that free and open internet uh, exists that it be allowed to uh, continued unfettered. What's it like for the Hollywood community to come to Washington DC and how are you received? Well uh, I have to say it uh, I wish I had brought some of the weather with me because <laughs> it was a bit rainy today uh, it's always an interesting phenomenon to bring uh, to come to uh, to DC there's there's an interesting relationship uh, when, often when I come, uh, I come with representatives of the Screen Actors Guild. Uh, last time I was here with its president, Alan Rosenberg, uh, and today with uh, one of its members, uh, Justine Bateman. Uh, they get recognized in the halls, and I kind of have to just remind everyone, well, I work in the industry, too, but behind the scenes. And, uh, no, it's, it's been uh, interesting, accommodating. Uh, I think our, our message is one that uh, represents not only the talent community. I think we're... What we saw in our negotiation and in our strike was that what we were fighting for wasn't just something that affected Hollywood. It was something that affected user-generated content and the ability of uh, anybody out there who, who wanted to be a writer, director, or actor to you know, get a share of their, uh, uh, of their work. And I think that was, uh, that, that was a legacy of, of, of our strike, that this... Uh, you know, at a time of reality television and user-generated content, when the studios are trying to see how much they can do without writers or without actors, uh, we uh, we showed that we can actually generate YouTube videos and blogs and websites and podcasts, and we did that content without the studios. And I think that's the sign of things to come, provided the internet is allowed to remain free and and open. Do you get an ear primarily from the? congressional delegation from California? Or are there other senators or legislators that, that get your attention? Uh, certainly the Southern California delegation, uh, as well as Senator Boxer, who uh, we've met with uh, uh, several times over the past uh, year, 
uh, are, are receptive and, and responsive. But uh, uh, Congressman Markey uh, out of Massachusetts has been uh, also very, very interested in, in what we're doing. Senator Dorgan of, of uh, uh, North Dakota uh, has been a, uh, 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 careful in his analysis of what the FCC has been up to. And, and he, as I said, along with Senator Snow of Maine, proposed the Internet Freedom and Preservation Act. So, you know, as I, as I said, this is not just a Hollywood issue, uh, even though most historically, you know, entertainment has come out of uh, Hollywood. That, that's changing as, as the end, again, thanks to the Internet. It's making us all uh, part of this, uh, this new entertainment community. And on a statewide level, does it help that you have an actor for a governor? Well, sometimes uh, uh, Governor Schwarzenegger uh, is a member of the Screen Actors Guild. He uh, uh, has been, uh, he was, you know, supportive during the, 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 uh, during the strike and, and involved in, in consultation. Um, but it's, you know, these are things that we uh, have to solve for ourselves very often. And, and his involvement uh, is, uh, uh, I think it's tricky for him because he's, uh, been obviously very successful as a, as an actor as a performer, uh, but now I think he represents a uh, uh, the entire state and has to be uh, diplomatic and his help. Testified on the internet. What are some other issues that our folks would be interesting to know that, that you keep a close eye on congressionally specifically? Well, congressionally, we've been uh, obviously focused on on net uh, neutrality. We we actually have a, uh, a piece of legislation at the. Uh, the state uh, level in Sacramento, uh, the California uh, State Senate right now, that deals with uh, uh, fair market valuation when uh, our residuals uh, are paid based on a percentage of revenue. And very often uh, when a vertically integrated company sells a TV show or film to a subsidiary, they'll make a deal that uh, is obviously made in-house and in, in the interest of of saving itself money will will make the licensing fee uh, lower. It won't be an arm's length transaction. And unfortunately, what that means is the percentage of revenue that the writers, the actors, the directors, as well as the uh, the below the line unions, uh, the uh, uh, the crew, uh, their pension and health contributions are based on that a percentage of that revenue. And so, if the licensing fee is not based at a fair market rate then our residuals and their pension and health contributions are, are uh, dis decimated and often eliminated. Um, so vertical integration is of consideration to us. Uh, media consolidation, as I spoke about earlier, on a, on a, uh, at a congressional level. Uh, you know, we deal with the FCC uh, when it comes to issues like product integration. What we're seeing in, a, a, as the, uh, the media becomes one of, of uh, uh, having to sell products. I mean, television has been a, 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 a ad-based business, broadcast television in particular, for, for generations now. But what we're seeing is the, the uh, ability of the producers to, to work products into uh, the shows themselves. It's, it's one thing to put uh, a bottle of uh, uh, soda on the table or water and, and have a product placement for which they get promotional consideration and give notice for that, but it's another thing to actually require the writers to write a line that talks about the refreshment of Coca-Cola and to have the actors do that when in fact they're not getting additional compensation and some actor who would otherwise might be out there uh, doing a, a commercial for either that product or a competitor uh, isn't getting compensated. And so product integration is something that we've been dealing with uh, the FCC for, for several months now and, and uh, uh, Chairman Martin is asking for some uh, rulemaking authority in that regard, and we're hoping to see that proceed in the future. What about indecency? Does that concern your uh, guild? Uh, naturally, indecency. Uh, we want to make sure that that you know the laws protect uh, uh, people who would otherwise not uh, uh, should shouldn't be exposed to the kind of content that uh, uh, you know, I've I have three young children myself, and want to make sure that they're uh, shielded from whatever is is inappropriate. But by the same token, uh, you know we have to be careful that those laws don't. Uh, you know, kill a fly with a cannon and overcompensate for, uh, uh, you know, protecting the wrong things. Our guest, besides working on The Tonight Show, has written for the animated programs Rugrats, The Critic, Muppets Tonight, and Pinky and the Brain, as well as Futurama. Patrick Brown, thanks for being on The Communicators. Thank you, Pedro.